What's going on Neon Nation? Welcome back for some more Cyberpunk 2077 and Cyberpunk lore. Today we're diving into part 2 of 3 of our Nomad series where we'll take a look at the different family structures and the different Nomad nations. With the Badlands being such a big part of 2077 and with the Aldecaldos and Raph and Shiv being confirmed for the game, it's a perfect time to take a look at the history of the Nomads from Cyberpunk 2020 and possibly understand the Cyberpunk 2077 Nomad life path option a little bit better. If you guys have missed the first part, I suggest you watch that one first. If you'd like to purchase the 2020 source material where some of this information is derived from, it will be in the pinned comment. First, let's look at the Nomad family structure. This is the way Nomads are classified based on their size and set of interests. A Nomad family consists of between 10 to 100 people and is the basis for all Nomad societies. A clan is a group of Nomads in the 300 to 1200 people range. These represent extended family that you usually get through marriage, community, and neighborhoods. The Aldecaldo Nation, for example, was formed from Juan Aldecaldo's extended family. A tribe is where we start getting into some of the larger nomad numbers. They're made up of roughly 10 to 30,000 people. This is the nomad structure responsible for setting up the nomad economy, and tribes split up into individual clans when moving through various and usually dangerous areas. Finally, we have a nomad nation, which consists of anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million people. These are allied tribes who come together to face certain struggles and causes. Nomad nations come together to form a cohesive unit, covering all bases from transportation to scavenging and more. Next, let's take a better look at the seven distinct nomad nations, how they operate, if they teeter towards aggression or reclusiveness, and how they sustain their nations out in the wastelands of the cyberpunk dystopia. First up, we have the Snake Nation, which is the largest of the nomad groups. This is a group of independents who want not only to preserve their own autonomy, but also want a voice in overall nomad politics. The Snake Nation was largely created in response to the creation of the other six nations, and they soon realized to have a voice in promoting their views, they had to solidify into a group. Although the Snake Nation is loosely organized, their philosophy of autonomy is clear. The Snake Nation's motto is don't tread on me. The Snake Nation is a pool of families involved in all areas of the nomad economy, and in 2020, they've invested a great deal into construction and salvaging jobs. Next up, we have the Jodes, which originated from the Jode families from Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas. The Jodes were driven to California due to environmental conditions wrecking havoc on their crops and agricultural lands. As the Jodes did not want to head towards the populated areas affected by the collapse, they moved on elsewhere. Initially, the Jodes traveled to Colorado, where they were looking to coexist with the locals in this area. Naturally, with limited resources during this time period, well-populated areas didn't take too kindly to strangers entering their territory, and inevitably the citizens of Colorado and the surrounding areas sent a raid out to the encroaching Jodes. 400 Jode travelers were slaughtered, but despite this, a man named Malachi tried to regroup the Jodes once and for all, with the council meeting on what they wanted to accomplish. They all agreed on wanting to protect their families, for revenge on the attackers, and overall autonomy. Their agreement, set forth during this council meeting, became the basis for the Nomad Code in protecting your family, not stealing from the clan, and not hoarding resources that can be beneficial to all within the clan. It was also decided that the able-bodied members should enact revenge for the Colorado attack, despite Maliki Jode's objections. They got their revenge by slaughtering a third of the residents and by ransacking and pillaging the town. Eventually, the Jodes ended up in a post-ecologically devastated Los Angeles where they snagged a lucrative building contract which was supervised by another nomad nation, the Aldecaldos. The word Jode originates from the uprooted people caused by the Dust Bowls. Next we have the Blood Nomad Nation. A major side effect of the collapse was that Miami slid into a war zone. The combination of it being the center of the North American drug trade, as well as massive immigration from Cuba and Haiti, many rival drug organizations took refuge in Miami. With the drug trade collapsing, overall violence increased, and cartel-based gang and turf wars took off. The government zoned off the area and let the dust settle, and by 1996, the Bloods emerged from the ruins of Miami. The Bloods are a mash of Haitian and other Caribbean immigrants to Miami. In 2020, they're very removed from their gang roots from pre-collapse times. The Bloods in Miami are also strong believers in the faiths of Santeria and Voodoo, which are polytheistic faiths, integrated into Christianity at this time. As a side note here, I have a theory that the Voodoo Boys, the Haitian Netrunner gang from the 2077 E3 2019 demo, 
are descendants of the Blood Nomad Nation and have made a Twitter thread explaining why. So if you're a 2020 lore expert or want to weigh in on the discussion, I will put a link in the pinned comment. Let me know what you guys think, I think it's pretty convincing. Now Florida never really recovered from the collapse and when all was said and done, three things were left. The mouse, which refers to the Walt Disney Corporation, the Everglades, and the circus. The Bloods ended up moving to Walt Disney World after years of both of these entities merely surviving and the Bloods found their calling when Disney absorbed the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Initially, they created one of the biggest traveling entertainment shows, but the Blood Nation were eventually forced from the Disney complex via the Lazarus Group who were reclaiming the complex. The Bloods eventually returned to Miami and ended up controlling the largest traveling entertainment in the world despite not being fully mobile until 2008. Next we have the Meta aka the Metacorp, the youngest of the nations, and oddly enough they're actually a corporation and most of the Meta are ex-military. This nation is run by Jonathan Meta, the nephew of a Vietnam veteran who gravitated towards joining the ranks when he saw the injustice of how his uncle was treated after dying in the war and despite saving the lives of many, was scorned at his funeral. Meta eventually did join the army, although after the events of the collapse, his military records were destroyed and thus he sought after more routine work. The next couple of years saw Meta disappearing from this more regular life when events like the Central American conflict would occur. He was also seen at odd times with powerful people involved in cartels, corporations, governments, and even sports teams. 2008 brought the restructure of the government and Meta was unaware until his involvement in the Second South American War ended in 2011. In this time, many involved in the war were denied a path back home through faulty paperwork and this led Jonathan Meta to congregate with others cast aside by their government to create Metacorp and use the resources available by the most prolific members to create MetaKey, a mobile island city. MetaKey eventually reached out support to nomads who had also been shunned by society and the changes in government and by 2020 had funneled over $3 billion into the nomad economy which gained them a spot as a nomad nation. Thanks for watching guys and for more cyberpunk join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.